Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another video. Today I'm going to give you my opinion about the Tuxedo Pulse 15, which I had with me here for a couple of weeks. It has been a great experience, it's really a good laptop. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So let's begin here with the processor. You have two processor choices for this laptop. The first choice is an AMD Ryzen 5 4600H and the second one is the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H. Now in this particular machine what I have here, I have the Ryzen 7 4800H and this comes together with the GPU which is the RX Vega 7 graphics. If you have the Ryzen 5 processor, you will get the Radeon RX Vega 6 graphics. Now, as I said, processor and graphic cards are going together here. There is something you need to be aware about this graphic card and this processor is that if you have an external 4K monitor with 60 Hertz, you can connect it only via HDMI because this is the only video port we have on this laptop. And if you're not using a high quality HDMI, at least HDMI 2.1, and it has to be maximum 50 centimeters in length, then you will have some flickering on the display. This has been happening to me because I don't have this high quality HDMI cable and it's definitely longer than a half meter. And when I connected this laptop to my 4K display, it was indeed flickering when it was connected to the charger. When it wasn't connected to the charger, it wasn't flickering. But nevertheless, this is something that you need to be aware of if you want to use this laptop with an external 4K display. Now the RAM on this specific machine is a 32 gigabytes RAM, 3200 megahertz CL22 from Samsung. Now when you buy the laptop, you have several configurations there and the one I get here is the 32 gigabytes variant. The SSD in this specific machine is a 500 gigabyte Samsung 970 EVO Plus SSD. This is an NVMe PCIe SSD. And again, when you buy the laptop, you can configure it with different storage options at different price points as well. I have also in this laptop Intel Wi-Fi 6, AX200 and Bluetooth 5.1. These are standards. The webcam is a 720p webcam. Now, the interesting thing about this webcam is that actually when I opened the laptop for the first time, the webcam was turned off in the BIOS. So when you buy this laptop and that happened to you as well, make sure that you boot into the BIOS and check that the webcam is turned on if you want to use it, because by default, at least in my case, it was turned off in the BIOS. Now for the sound, we have here two integrated speakers, 2.2 watts, that's the power. So if you wanna hear music while you're working on your laptop, I definitely recommend you to have earplugs or external speakers. If you wanna watch YouTube videos and stuff like this, it's absolutely okay with the integrated speakers, but they are by no means the best speakers in the world. And again, if you want to listen to music, definitely go for external speakers. Now the ports on this laptop, we have a one USB 3.2 generation one type C port. However, it does not have display port, so you will not be able to connect any display with this USB-C port, but it does offer power delivery. We have also two USB-3 ports and also one USB-2 port. Now, I don't know why they put one USB-2 port here. This seems to be kind of a legacy port at this point in time. Maybe they did it for compatibility, I'm not sure, but it would have been nice to have actually an extra USB-3 port. We have, as I said before, also an HDMI 1.4B port, including HTCP, with the limitations I mentioned before. We have one gigabit port also on the laptop. We have also a headphone jack, Kensington lock and a card reader, which is a micro SD. Now the micro SD card reader is connected actually to USB 2. So it's pretty slow if you want to transfer data from there, but nevertheless, it's there if you want to use it. And we have, of course, our DC in power connection. Now the battery on this laptop is a 91.25 watt per hour battery, and it is a four cell lithium polymer battery. It is changeable. You can open the bottom case and take away the screws and replace it if you want to. So this is a nice touch. And being such a big battery, of course, the battery life is going to be absolutely great. Browsing the internet, watching YouTube videos, listening to music and working on productivity stuff and just normal usage, you're gonna have a very long battery life. In my testing, I had something between 18 and 20 hours. But let me also say, if you're looking for a gaming laptop, this is definitely not the laptop for you. I tried actually some games on this laptop, like for example, Witcher 3, 
And if you're going to play these on high resolution, you're not going to have great frame rates on that. For example, on Witcher 3 on high resolutions, I got something like 18 frames per second, which is not really great. But if you're playing on lower resolutions, you're going to get something between 30 and 60, depending on the resolution you're choosing. So if you're planning to play heavy games in here, that's probably not the best laptop you can buy for that. But for normal usage, the combination between the battery and the display is definitely going to be great. Now the keyboard is a backlit keyboard, it's full size and it's very comfortable to type on. Now the keyboard is personal preference, the typing experience is always personal. This keyboard is very nice. I would like actually to have a little bit more feedback from the keys. They are fairly soft to press, but again this is personal preference and you will get used to this keyboard very quickly. The trackpad is fairly large, it's not as large as a MacBook Pro or other Windows laptops that I used, but it's very accurate, the gestures are also very accurate and you have a very good feedback on the left and on the right side if you need to click, or you can also use tap to click in the settings of your laptop. Now let me go into the laptop and show you also the Tuxedo Control Center, which is one utility you need to be aware of if you're using this laptop and any other Tuxedo laptop, by the way. So this is the Tuxedo Control Center. Here I am on Arch Linux, but you can download this also on other distributions as well. On Arch Linux and Manjaro and other Arch-based distributions, you will find it in the AUR. On Ubuntu-based distribution, you will have this utility in the Tuxedo repositories. Now, when you buy the laptop, you can choose several distributions. By default, you will find probably Tuxedo OS, which is based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, and it's using the Baji desktop, but you can work with any distribution on this laptop. I tested here Arch Linux, I tested also OpenSUSE, Fedora, Ubuntu and many others and they work all flawlessly. Now depending on the distribution you will have to look around and see how you can download and install the Tuxedo Control Center if you want to but for most distributions it is available. Now here you have the dashboard. The dashboard basically is going to show you what's going on right now on your laptop. So we have CPU temperature, CPU frequency and the CPU fan here and we have also here some other settings for the CPU, the display, and also the active cores. Now the fan profile is balanced, and this is the profile it's using right now. Under profiles here, we have several profiles already available out of the box. We have here, for example, also some filters. If you click in use, you will see right now we are using the default one, and we can also go in here and change it if you want. We have also here other pre-made profiles, cool and breezy. We have also here Power Extreme if you want to have the maximum battery life. Or we have also the default custom profile that we can personalize. If we go into the settings, you can customize these to your liking. So if you have a specific need, for example, for the fan control or for the CPU settings, you can go in here and tweak it yourself. We have also tools here. We can change the crypt password. If you have encryption or your installation right now, I don't have it. That's why it's not available. And we have also a shutdown timer. Now under the settings here, very important things. We have the global profile settings. We can change CPU settings and fan control. But most importantly, we have Chroma subsampling. Now here we have the possibility to enable the Chroma subsampling for the HDMI port. Now, as I told you before, if you don't have a high quality HDMI cable, which is less than half meter long, and you have flickering on a 4K display with 60 Hertz, you can activate this option here on the HDMI port to basically avoid the flickering of the display. That means, as it says here, by using this option, you're basically using a lossy compression to reduce the data rate over the cable. So you will be able to connect to your display. You will have some reduced data rate over the cable, but if you don't have a high quality HDMI cable, there is also the option available here in the settings. We have also here some information about the Tuxedo Control Center and also here the support number for Tuxedo. If you bought this laptop, you can also check it in here. We have some option here for system diagnostics that you can check. You can also have here remote support. You can install here the AnyDesk if you want to have support from Tuxedo itself. And in the last option here, you have also the option to restore your system. Now I installed here WebFi Creator, which is a Tuxedo utility. You can install it from the AUR if you're using Arch or if you're using an Ubuntu distribution, you will have it on the Tuxedo repositories. And here you can create basically your USB stick if you want to restore your computer. Now in the box, when you buy the laptop, you will have already a WebFi stick in there to restore your laptop and you can use this option if you want to create extra ones. Now the Tuxedo Pulse 15 is a great laptop with very few shortcomings. Now the design is always personal preference, 
but I really like this design. It's very stealthy. It's a nice color for me. This black matte color is really nice. I wish actually the logo could stand out a little bit more. And by the way, if you buy this online, you will have the choice to have the tuxedo logo, to have your own logo. It's going to cost you a little bit extra or no logo at all. So this is something to keep in mind if you want to personalize your laptop even further. The display is great. The trackpad is good, the keyboard is good, the battery is fantastic and the performance in normal use is absolutely great. This particular review unit that I have here has plenty of RAM, as I said it has 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabytes SSD which is really fast. So I have no issues with performance, but if you want to play games on this laptop, especially heavy games, this is probably not the best laptop for that. You will need probably a more powerful graphic card. But for the rest of the tasks you want to do on your laptop, on a Linux laptop in this case, it's definitely going to be fantastic. Now, depending on the configuration, you're going to pay something between 1000 and 1600 euros with taxes included. The configuration is going to be up to you and depending where it's going to ship, it's going to have also tax deducted that you will have then to pay in your own country. So I will leave a link also in the video description to the Tuxedo website on the Pulse 15 website where you can configure it yourself eventually and see the prices for yourself and then see also how much it's going to cost your personal configuration. Now my personal laptop here is still the Tuxedo Infinity Book which I bought in 2019 and it has an 8th generation Intel processor and I'm going to stick still with that one because it's still working really well but if I would be in the market right now for a new AMD laptop I would definitely have a look at this one because it's really great especially because of the battery size and the 1080p display you're going to have great battery life here no matter what you do even when you are gaming so this is something to keep in mind and if I would be in the market to buy a new laptop with AMD processors I would definitely look at the Tuxedo Pulse 15. If you have any other question about the laptop let me know in the comments below as well and also check out the Tuxedo website as I said before for more information and more details about the laptop. Now this is all I have to say for today so thank you very much guys for watching the video and I'll see you very soon in the next one.